Thank you, Erwin, uh, for those very kind words. Thank you, Judy. Thanks to the entire ALS staff and the executive committee, and certainly my Villanova Law colleagues who are gathered here as well. It is really uh, so wonderful to be here for the first time since the pandemic began. I was so happy to see many folks over Zoom during the past couple of years, but there's just nothing like being together in person. And throughout this conference, I've been so grateful to have the opportunity to be here with all of you, to see smiles, to share stories, break bread, look you in the eye as fellow professors, deans, administrators, and Americans. I'm glad to have had this time together to engage in thoughtful discussions about the importance and relevance of law schools at a time when the strength of our democracy is being tested. I'm very proud to follow Erwin Chemerinsky, and I'm grateful for the inspiration of his leadership and the theme he set before us to consider how law schools can make a difference. I would like to build on his challenge and ask all of us to think and act together to define our role as the Association of American Law Schools in defending democracy. And that is my theme, defending democracy. And I propose that we embrace this as an ongoing challenge for all of us. I'm proposing that ALS focus on its role in defending democracy, not just this year, but over several years going forward. We have a special role to play in helping and saving our democracy from the very real dangers that threaten us and our country. We didn't get to this place of constitutional crisis or chaos overnight. And we're not going to find our way out of it in one or two election cycles. I have an analogy that I use to make the point of just how much danger our democracy is facing right now. We are at a crucial point in our nation's history where we are drifting. In some ways, we can see this moment as analogous to being pulled by a riptide in the ocean. The strong current moves us away from the safety of the shores of democracy, running out to an endless, dangerous sea. Swimmers caught in the riptide may not even realize what is happening, and then, suddenly, the shore is far away. Swimming back becomes difficult, perhaps impossible, and the shore, our democracy, is out of reach. The swimmer may try hard, panic, and even exhaust himself by trying to swim against the tide just to be caught up endlessly adrift and drowning. We are in danger of such a fate in our nation. Two years and a day ago, we were on the brink of losing our democracy. We witnessed a horrific and devastating attack that was beyond anything we could have imagined before that day. You may recall that within hours of that travesty, law school deans came together to speak out with a collective response. In that moment, it became clear to me that our unified commitment to the Constitution and our joint knowledge, scholarship, and determination to defend our democracy is a powerful force. More importantly, our unified response to the events of January 6th made clear that the members of the AALS collectively agree that our democracy is the lifeblood of a free and fair society and that it is worth being defended with action and resolve. We have a great country, but there are grave threats to it. 75% of all voters, right, left, and center, believe our democracy is threatened. Extremism, anti-Semitism, racism, violence against LGBTQ people and political violence persist. Mob violence threatens the rule of law. Election deniers and liars continue on their paths. And I'm horror struck to say that we need to say that a prerequisite to being President of the United States is to swear to uphold the Constitution, not to propose to terminate it. So the urgent question before us is how should ALS participate in defending our democracy? We have a greater role to play in ensuring the foundational tenets and norms of a civil democracy. When we raise our collective voice, leaders listen, media listen, and so do our students and our universities. Speaking out together against unlawful or anti-democratic actions and intentions plays an important role in educating not only our students, 
but the general public as well. The fine lines between First Amendment protections and the privileges and responsibilities of our democratic way of life must be explained to the public more forcefully in the interest of the common good. We are an association that has the ability to influence the influencers. My appeal to you is not about politics, right, left, or center. It's about what we can do together to defend democracy. There are non-political messages we can deliver. There are actions we can and must take. We can have meaningful and measurable impact on the future of our great democracy. I can't remember a time when the legal profession has had a greater, higher profile or greater exposure, or when lawyers were more in the news than over the last few years. Look around the room and you'll likely see someone you saw on national television just a few days ago offering explanations and insights into any number of subjects at the top of a news cycle. There are 332 million people in this country, and just 1.3 million of us are lawyers. It's less than one half of 1% who have the knowledge that we have and are sworn to the Constitution as we are as lawyers. Our outsized influence touches nearly every aspect of government, the economy, and society. We lawyers are elected officials, judges, CEOs, C-suite executives throughout private and public sectors. We are everywhere in places of prominence, power, and policy. Lawyers have shaped and will continue to shape our democracy. So what about us in legal academia? We, as educators of lawyers, we are the shapers of the shapers placing upon our shoulders a distinct responsibility to this country in ensuring that our democracy endures. How do we turn a spotlight on the meaning of the promise we make, our shared values, our commitment to the Constitution, commitment to the rule of law, and commitment to civil norms? How do we use our outsized influence to defend and strengthen our democracy? In the context of our work as law school faculty and staff, Defending democracy means so much, including defending and teaching the rule of law, teaching the centrality of our Constitution, and defending democracy also means imbuing respect for norms and traditions, and so much more. So my theme, defending democracy, that's the theme. Our organization is the AALS. For us, I believe the work of defending democracy is built on three pillars of every law school. Our curriculum, our scholarship, our culture. First, let's consider curriculum. Are law school curricula serving our democracy as well as they should be? Can we better embrace our roles in educating lawyers for their roles in the ongoing work of forming a more perfect union? How do we ensure that both the spirit and objectives of the rule of law and the norms that uphold it are a substantive dimension of the education we deliver? Can we do more than what we are currently doing? The lawyers we are preparing today will take on extraordinary challenges in the years ahead. They must be prepared. We can review not only what we teach but also how we teach, asking ourselves if we are truly reinforcing the norms and standards of our democracy. Now, I'm not suggesting that we shift curriculums in any particular direction, but I am urging that the intellectual essence of upholding the rule of law and the values it conveys belongs in every legal education. This is not about me. Ultimately, this is about our association and it's about you. I am very interested in hearing your ideas and considering how to fortify curricula in a society that is changing swiftly and issuing new challenges and opportunities every day. That is our collective challenge. My second area is our scholarship. How does scholarship achieve greater prominence in the work of defending democracy and strengthening our republic in the 21st century? There's exceptional scholarship being pursued by people throughout this room and throughout our law schools. As you know, my field is election law and constitutional law. 
I think that all scholarship connects with and even reinforces our democracy. Torts, civ pro, crim law, health law, intellectual property, you name it, it all connects with our system of laws. It is all part of our democracy. We are the architects, engineers, and builders of legal solutions to complex problems in our nation. And our scholarship is essential to the future of our democracy, our economy, and the well-being of all. The needs and expectations of our country and the world require diligent analysis and careful thought that require robust scholarship to promote the evolution of our society. Judges, lawmakers, and lawyers depend on our scholarship to do their work. To borrow from the paper chase, look to your left, look to your right. You're looking at some of the best legal minds in the country. Right? Yeah, that's good. Look to your left and right. <laughs> Truly, the best legal minds in the country here. How do we harness our knowledge and brain power in the interest of defending democracy? That answer is in your hands. The third area I'm focused on is law school culture. And it may be the most important. When I became dean at Villanova, I considered how I would shape my leadership agenda Villanova's motto of veritas, unitas, caritas, and the culture of Villanova University converged with what my parents worked to instill in my sister and me throughout our upbringing, and what I will try to bring with me wherever I go. So allow me to recall a moment when my, with my father that has never left me and I try to honor every day. It is one of my favorite stories to tell about my life with dad, going back to my teenage days. We lived in a townhouse on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. We were going out one weekend day to the corner store to get some ice cream, which of course was certainly a favorite activity. So as usual, we walked out the back door, heading past our cars that were parked in the alley behind the house. It was a quiet alley, and it was the quickest way to get to the corner store on East Capitol Street. As we walked through the alley, we came across a man by the garage behind a neighboring house. He was homeless. Life had not been good to him. He looked up at us and was startled, so he took a couple of steps back, now up against the garage itself. Dad looked him in the eyes and said, good morning, sir. The man, still somewhat startled, stood up a little straighter and said a simple good morning in return. Dad and I kept walking. About 50 yards later, at the end of the alley, Dad turned to me simply and said, he was somebody's baby one day. <clears throat> that moment with my father has never left me. Dad saw the humanity in all of us. He had worked as special counsel to the President for Civil Rights under President Johnson. He had served as the chairman of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. He had served as the first black sec secretary of the Army in the Carter administration, the position he was serving in at that time. He had met presidents, dignitaries, the Pope, and more. This homeless man deserved dignity and respect just as all those other people. In some ways, these values are universal values, showing dignity and respect remembering that that man was somebody's baby once upon a time. While these, I believe, are universal values, still too few people live these values. That immediate, reflexive respect for human dignity that I saw in my father is at the heart of what is decent in our society. My father showed respect for all, and I believe all deserve respect, but unfortunately, Society has seemed to have lost the proprieties of human interaction. I fear that polarization and politics are eroding respect for one another. A basic commitment to our common good and common decency has withered. I believe that our culture, the culture of our law schools, sets the tone for how we will all participate in defending our democracy. So at Villanova Law, we are consistently focusing on our law school culture to instill our values of veritas, unitas, caritas, 
truth, unity, and love. They are as much part of the educational experience as the academic rigor we bring into the classroom every day. Our values are the currency of our culture. So we pay a great deal of attention to our culture because our learning environment is crucial to how students assimilate the principles of ethical practice and respectful civic engagement. Now you might look at me and say he's the dean of a Catholic school, so this is a Catholic thing or a religious thing. And I contend this is just a human thing. And I also tell you it's a professional thing. Seeking truth under our oath to the Constitution within the norms of society and with care for the dignity and respect for every person must be an American lawyer thing. So I am so grateful that we're no longer conducting classes over Zoom. It is, it is in so many ways, but it's really hard to build that kind of love and respect within a community when the experience of community is online. We had little choice but to function that way, and I applaud all of us for doing so. But being back in person allows us to look each other in the eye in classrooms to respect the fundamental dignity of each person. It allows us to break bread with each other in our homes, law school cafeterias, and restaurants. It allows us to attend conferences like this one in person, united in the spirit of academia. It allows us to have a discussion, even a heated discussion, in person, so that we don't write that person off when we click the end button on our computer. At Villanova, we live by our motto of truth, unity, and love because we believe we must graduate lawyers who will bring light and truth to every situation they encounter, safeguarding the common good and protecting democracy. It is imperative to graduate lawyers who are capable of respectfully and earnestly engaging in difficult discourse while conscious of the norms of civil society. Unfortunately, the world has divided us. Our students and our deep reliance, our students' reliance and our deep reliance on staring into small screens keeps us from connecting personally with each other. The increasingly specialized content on the internet fosters division. Social unrest, protest, and hate has strained our bonds. So at a time when we are so painfully divided across the country and across kitchen tables, we, law school professors, deans, and administrators must model norms and inspire respectful discussion. We must reject behaviors and words that polarize. <clears throat> we must reject words that are divisive. We must put hard conversations on the table with a goal of building understanding and identifying ways to come together rather than give agency to what pulls us apart. And I believe, I know that every law school rises and falls as a community unified in its commitment to the study of law. We must openly welcome and confront varying perspectives and do so with respect. When we are bound by a commitment to each other as students, professors, administrators, staff, and alumni, we engage purposefully in serving democracy. When speakers come to the Villanova Law community, I expect them to come with respect and care and concern for the individuals in our community. I expect us to show respect, reciprocal respect to any guest. We will grow if we can come with love and respect, committed to open, honest debate about ideas. I require no political, religious litmus test. I demand no specific oath. Each person is invited to engage in our discourse. We have no appetite for silencing anyone who disagrees with what anyone else in the community thinks or believes, as long as each comes in search of truth and with respect. So instilling behaviors that keep lawyers loyal to what unites us should be as fundamental as learning how to write a good brief. Creating classroom experiences that inspire confidence and courage to speak truth is a necessary condition of developing principled law leadership in our students. Each of our schools, each one, has its own unique culture, each vitally important to our profession and to intellectual diversity. Each of our distinct cultures is a critical component of the educational experiences we deliver. And I know that each of you can find a way in your culture to make a difference. And we, as an association, must seek ideas and information to develop our ultimate understanding in pursuit of truth that will strengthen our collective role in defending democracy. So as I stated earlier, 
The three areas I suggest we begin with are what I believe are fundamental pillars of a law school, curriculum, scholarship, culture. Collectively, we are teaching the courses, writing the scholarship, and shaping the cultures that shape legal education. As individual professors, deans, and administrators, we can work together to defend democracy. As an association, AALS offers us a terrific platform to collaborate in meetings like this, in smaller conferences, through the sections, and more. As your president, I am energized just thinking about the possibilities for how we will work together on defending democracy. At our next conference in January 2024, when we meet in our nation's capital, I will conclude my year as president of ALS, but I'm hopeful we will be well into our enduring work together, as Ben Franklin would say, in keeping our republic. I ask that we embrace this theme as a centerpiece effort of our ongoing challenge to harness our collective power in defending democracy. In doing so, I believe we will be celebrating the ideas and ideals of democracy together as an ever more perfect union. Thank you.